So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. We're delighted to have you to our webinar today, uh, which has been facilitated by Paul O'Connor from Galway and Common ETB. Paula will be speaking about uh, remote working in the adult literacy with groups and using screen presso and other literacy tools. So for any of you that haven't tuned into one of these NALA webinars before, uh, the questions method is used through by going to the toolbar on your right. If you can't see the toolbar, click on the orange square with the white arrow in it and go down to the near the bottom, there's a questions option. And just across the word questions, you see a box with an arrow pointing up. You click on that box and it opens up your questions in the middle of your screen. You can write in a question for Paula there. So while she's presenting, a question pops into your head. Type it in there and then, or at the end. And so what will happen at the end is um, I'll come back on and I'll read out the questions for Paula. So over to you, Paula. All the best. Thanks. So thanks, Fergus. Um, as Fergus said, my name is Paula O'Connor. I work as an adult literacy tutor with Jiri TB, and I also work as a distance learning tutor with NALA. And a number of weeks ago, at the start of the lockdown, we did a presentation on various video conference tools that we might use to engage with learners and Joan felt that it might be a good thing to share with you how we might use video recording of our screens and tablets and that to enhance the learning because it's all so much more difficult now everyone working remotely. So I'm not meant to see my own picture, but it's in my way. Oh God, hold on. Give me one second. Okay, so today we're going to outline screen recording on a laptop using Screen Presso, screen recording on Android phones and tablets using X Recorder, and screen recording on Apple devices. And then we'll briefly look at how we might edit, compress, and share those recordings. So as I said, we've been working kind of on online platforms since the 12th of March. The learners that have access to email, we have a lot of scope once they have email and Wi-Fi, because we can send them links to lots of different things. So, we can also share videos if we're on Zoom calls or Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, etc. And that's where videos might come in handy in that it can be hard, it can be difficult to explain things to people over the phone or even on the video. But if they have a little clip, a short video of you doing something with your voice, that might enhance their learning and enable them to do things, say if it's to install an app on their Android device or play an app. So th after this, you should be able to confident enough to go and make short videos yourself and how to explain how to do things on the laptop, phone or tablets. So I've been using Screen Presso for a number of years and it captures everything that you do on your desktop along with your voice. And it's free to install or you can upgrade to a paid version, but the 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 free version does everything we'd need, really. Um, it puts in a Screen Presso logo at the end, but it doesn't put a watermark on top of every screen or anything on top of the screen. So it's very good. So we can use it to show people how to do things on our on our laptops. It could also be used to record skills demonstrations for submission for QQI. So we'd install it. You'd install it from the screenpresso.com website in download. The link is given on the previous slide. And the latest version is 1.80. So on this slide, then you'd click download screen presso. It downloads, and when it downloads, it'll show up on the left hand side of your screen left hand side bottom of your screen, you click on that to install Screen Presso.
So to use it then, this video goes into how we might, how we would use it. So once it's installed on your PC, what I usually do is search for it here in the search bar, type in screen presso, open screen presso, and this is the window over here on the right. It'll show up on the right hand side of your screen. These files here are videos I've already made. This would be to publish files to the web or to send them by email. This would be to edit files and to capture files. So to capture a screenshot, you go to screenshot region, click on that, and then you select the part of the screen that you want to capture, and that goes in as a PNG screenshot. Then if you want to do a video recording, you say capture and you select video. Once you select video, you get an option up to, uh, the red button is going to start your recording or else press print screen to start. And again, press print screen to stop the recording or the red button to stop your recording. So while you're recording, everything on your screen will be recorded. So if you have it down to a fine art and you just do start and stop where you like, um, be clear with the speak over, then you shouldn't need to edit it afterwards, especially if they're short clips. And we'll go into how we might edit them later on. So this is a screen. This is a video that I made using Screen Presso. A number of weeks ago, my colleague, my NALA colleague, Pauline, gave a very good presentation on ESOL. And part of that presentation was that Oxford University Press had made 148, sorry, I'm just going to start this video had made 148 graded reader books available for free on their website. And that's until June the 30th. So what I wanted to do was be able to share with my learners how they can access this. So again, this is them how they could access it on their PC. They go to the website, oxfordlearnersbookshelf.com and click on register, put in their name last name, their username is their email address, and then they're asked to set up a password. So this video would get them started on how to get in to start reading the books. They put in their password and confirm their password. Click on the terms and conditions to create their account. Once they have an account, they can start using the Oxford Learners Bookshelf. So they're going to log in. I'm going to put in my email address and the password that I've just created. And then I say sign in. So of the 148 free eBooks, I can add them to bookshelf here. And scrolling down, I can see that they range from A1, A2 to B1, B2. So this, this is the selection of books. So we'll just have a look at this because it might be of interest to yourselves as well. So the A1 books. A1, A2. It says expires the 31st of August, but I think the, the free is the 30th of June unless they've extended it. So a nice variety of books there. And some of my learners have loved reading them. From a tutor's perspective, it's not just reading. There's reading in the books. There's also audio, so you can play audio. And what's very nice is in the first instance, when you go into a book, you can go to the glossary and see the 
words that may be difficult at that level, you can play them and you can see an explanation of those words. So this is the book called The Last Chance. Here we have the contents. And if I want to go to the glossary on page 25, I just tap up to the right here and say jump to 25 and say go. So in here in the glossary then, if I click on, if I, the sound of the video is turned off, but I could click on the audio and that would read out the word around and we can read the explanation for the word there. Likewise, if I go over to the left here, I can see the contents of the book. And I can go back to contents and go to the first page. Scroll up and down. I can easily navigate the book and again play the audio here. So this now is all in the video that the learner can see. So they can be very comfortable in how they're going to use the Oxford Learners Bookshelf when they do register and install it. That's just reading some of the book and then you, you don't have to have the audio on and then you can just turn it off. You can turn, turn the audio on or off basically. That's going into another book. And also in that there's questionnaires like little exercises for the learners that they can do before they read the book, during, while they're reading the book and after reading the book, a series of questions. So I thought that was worth um, showing again today because those resources are excellent. So that, that covers off the screen presso. Now, if I want to quickly show somebody how to do something on their Android phone, I might like to make a screen record, a recording of my screen on my Android. So this would be the same on an Android or a tablet. There's many applications that can do this. The one that I found that was most recommended was X Recorder by InShot. So on the right hand side here, you the tutor, you would install this app on your phone. You're going to you'll record activities on your phone and they'll save as MP3, MP4 files into your My Files video on your phone. You could then share those video clips to explain things to your learners. This screen here is trying to explain to you how it looks. So the top one appears on your, you'll have a little orange camera on your phone. You touch it and it brings up the settings, record, tools, home and settings. So when I press that orange button at the top or is a kind of red button, <clears throat> that starts recording. It does a countdown, three, two, one, and then starts recording. Your voiceover on the screen will also be recorded, which I think is the really the real beauty in these um, apps. So while recording, you'll see the little a little orange circle on your screen, and that'll have a timer. And then when you're ready to stop, you press the timer and press stop recording, or you can also say pause recording. And then that clip goes into your My Files videos. And that can be shared then by text, WhatsApp, email, etc. So this video here is one that I made with that app. You can see the little orange circle down below. So what we're doing is we're going into Play Store and we're going to install an app in Play Store. The app I would like to install is SightWords Dolch List. Again, an app that um, some beginner readers have found invaluable. So this little clip would show them how to install the app on their phone. Again, with people in isolation and that, they might not have the usual family or friends around to show them how to do things, how to install apps on their phone. So the app is installed, I went into play, play primer, 
coming in and when I click on this it'll say a and away and it reads the words out for the learner so the learners find this very good you can also see the words all together if you do it in alphabetic order. Not that one, now the next one. So here I'd select um, H and go down and play some of the words from there. I click on had and it says had, hand, has. So that would be a little video that we could send maybe on a WhatsApp or whatever way you know that your learner can see that video. That would be the best way to send it. So that's X Recorder, and that is how you would record things on your Android phone and tablets. The next thing I shared before um, a number of months ago, maybe even last year, and when I found out I could do this, I thought it was fantastic. We can screen record on the iPad without installing any app. The settings are there. We go into the control panel, go to customize controls, and this screen recording is there, and you say plus. So you add screen recording as a customized feature on your iPad. And then you can, as we've done on the laptop and the Android, we can record lessons of how to do things on the iPad. You do need to make sure that you don't have any content restrictions, that screen recorded is not a restricted feature. So you can do that, just check your screen time. On my iPad, the screen time, um, there's no screen time set, set, so that's good. So then, once you have it, you go to, once you have it set up on your iPad, you swipe up from the bottom edge of any screen, or swipe down from the upper right corner of your screen, and you get this screen that's seen on the that you can see on my screen at the moment. So down at the very bottom there, the circle with the circle around it, that's a record button. So you press on that, and if you want to speak as well with the microphone, keep it pressed down and say microphone on. And then you tap that, that button goes red, you tap it and that starts the recording and up at the very top of your screen then you'll have that it's it's still recording and you'll press that to stop your recording so it works like a dream so maybe an idea would be to show your learners on the ipad how they might play different games and apps um one word game is wordscapes the learners love it um i suppose we, are they beneficial i think they are um the jury's out um maybe some games are a bit addictive and some of them have options to purchase tokens and that to progress quicker so people need to make sure not not to spend any money on the games you can move up in different levels and get tokens in that way Another game for logical thinking, spatial reasoning and problem solving is Rush Hour. It's um, a real live game in a box that you could purchase or we can play it online. So this here is a video where I'm just showing how you might play Rush Hour or Unblock Car is the name of the app. So you have different levels, you go in, you play and say what level you want to play at. So the idea is that these cars and trucks are in a parking lot and you have to get the yellow car that's on the left hand side. You've got to get that out the exit that's on the right hand side. So you move the cars, move the cars around and it's um, very good for spatial awareness. 
So in a second of this video, let's start moving these cars. Mm. Okay, so you move the move the trucks down, move the pink car out of the way, move the yellow car back, move the blue car, move the trucks and the blue car down, and the yellow car is free to go at the exit. So that's just a very easy way, and your voice would be over that video. So a very nice way to share with our learners how they can use things on their iPad. So the screen capture is very basic, but I suppose no harm to include it, that we can share things just with a screen, a piece of our screen and explain things very easily step by step. Everybody would be familiar on the laptop maybe with print screen, and you can print your screen and copy it into Paint. Also, the Microsoft snipping tool is very handy and does the same thing. So it allows you to snip your screen, a bit like what I did in Screenpresso. Depending on your Android phone, you might have different ways of capturing a screenshot. Um, on my phone, I hold the Home button and the On Off button at the same time that captures the screen and puts it into um, screenshots in the Photos folder. If you're using Google Assist, you could say, Google, take a screenshot. On the iPad, also very handy to be able to take a screenshot. Press and hold the top button when viewing the screen you want to capture, and then tap the Home button and release both. So once we've created all our videos, be it if they're for using apps or how to send emails or anything, I suppose one thing we need to be careful of is confidentiality, that nothing on your screen is videoed that um, you shouldn't be sharing. So you need to always keep that in mind. But once you have your videos then, you might like to use a video editor. And that would be one way of taking out, say, if there was something in it that you didn't want anyone to see, you could, you could cut that out or trim it out. So on the iPad, the iMovies app is very um, user friendly and it's free. You just download it from the App Store and it works very well. So you could edit your videos on the iPad. Just skipping down there, on the Android, I tend not to edit videos on my phone but there's many, many video, edit, video editing apps available on Android. Um, some of them Adobe Video Rush, InShot, KineMaster, and Velo. And I haven't, they're the top four that are advised on that, on that YouTube video, that they're rated to be the top four. All of them you pay a little for, or else what you do is, you either have a watermark or you have a bit of advertising. So if you needed those, what I would do instead was I would take a video from my Android and bring it onto my laptop and edit it on my laptop. So on my laptop, AVS Video Converter is free and it can convert from one file type to another. And very often what you might want need to do is compress your video. So you might put it into a um, AVS video converter and compress it so that it will be smaller in size and easier to send and distribute to people. The AVS video editor, I'm using this um, at the moment, it's at version 9.3 and it's very handy and very easy to, to use to trim, cut, split, merge, rotate and mix videos. So all things you might want to do if you've built up little videos, collection of videos. You can apply effects and overlays in certain menus, audios, text and subtitles. So you can do most things in this without having paid, um, or you can get a once off license payment for 30 euro. It does only work on one, one laptop for that payment. But in general, I think it might be worth paying for one editor 
and then get used to using that editor and um, you'll have you'll have all the features within it if you've paid a small fee for it. So then it goes to how you're going to share your video recordings. Well, you can share them by email, by text, by WhatsApp. You could put them on your OneDrive, ShareDrive, Dropbox, et cetera, and send a link. Or you could decide to create a YouTube channel. So YouTube, once you have a, a Gmail account, you have access to YouTube, you just go into YouTube and create your own channel. The nice thing about that is you can put your videos up there, but you can keep them private and then just share with who you want to share with. So send a link, an email link to who you want to share them with so they don't have to be public. So you decide yourself what the best way your learners would like to receive the recordings in. So maybe just before we get to the before we get to the end, before we get to Q&A, I'll just share one other thing. We spoke a few weeks ago about um, how we might use different products to hold video meetings with our learners. And we spoke about Google Hangouts. So in the meantime, Google Hangouts have been replaced with Google Meet. And Google Meet, I thought it was worth mentioning here because it just works so nicely. If you open your Gmail now, you'll notice Meet down here. And this is Google Meet and it works very um, much more streamlined than Hangouts and less headaches. So I click on start a meeting that opens this window here. I say join now. Sorry. Join now. So then it brings me into the meeting and then I say I want to add other people to the meeting. I can copy joining info and email people or I can say add people, add people here and say send email. And then I join meeting. So Google Meet is working very well for me for the last uh, two to three weeks. It's uh, much nicer to use than Google Hangouts. So just thought I'd throw that in there. So just to recap on the webinar content, we saw how we could screen record on our laptops using ScreenPresso, screen record on Android phones and tablets using an app called X Recorder. Now there are lots of other apps um, and they would work in a similar way. Just the, the recommended one I found was uh, X Recorder and it works well. We could screen record on Apple iPhones and iPads. And then we have some suggested tools on how we might edit those videos, compress them, and share them with our learners. So if we have any um, questions, Fergus, people might like to put questions in on their, their questions panel. 